In this video, I'm going to tell you guys and show you guys how to do an effective body weight only leg workout. There is a misconception that you always need to use weight in order to get a good hypertrophy response for your legs. Now, if you train in a conventional method, this is probably true, but there are some tips and tricks that you can apply to body weight only leg training that's going to increase the intensity, increase the time under tension, and fatigue your muscles quite a lot. That's what we're going to get into today. Now, in traditional lifting or gym lore, usually you start with the biggest, hardest compound movements first, and then afterwards you would do your isolation movements. Because we're dealing with body weight only, we're gonna do it completely the opposite. We're gonna start with our isolation movement first so that we can pre-exhaust our muscles. That way, by the time we get to our compound movements, like our body weight squats, our legs are gonna be very fatigued already and it's just gonna be a lot more effective from a muscle fatigue and hypertrophy perspective. For today's workout, I'm choosing four exercises. Each one has its own purpose. I chose them for a reason. For our quadricep focus, we're gonna do step-ups. But we're gonna do the step-ups in a special way that emphasizes your calf muscles. Next, we're gonna do walking lunges. Walking lunges are a compound movement, but I would say the primary mover, it's the glutes, especially the side glutes, because it's one leg at a time, there's a big stabilization factor, so that will work the glutes. The next exercise will be the body weight good morning. Uh, you don't see very many people performing this exercise. It seems very light, very pointless. But if you actually try this and you do enough sets and reps, your hamstrings and lower back are gonna be very, very sore the next day. So I always include this either on my pull-up day or I include this on my leg day, which I'll do today. Finally, the last exercise will just be your standard body weight squats. Now, if you did the squats first, you would have to do an insane amount of volume with very little rest to actually fatigue your muscles. But by the time we get to this exercise, our legs are gonna be very tired already and it's gonna make it a lot more difficult and hence a lot more effective. Let's talk about how much volume you need to do and how you should go about this. The way you wanna approach this is on individual basis. You need to see how you're feeling during these sets. You wanna go until your muscles feel very fatigued and you have to kind of adjust the volume based on how you feel the next day. If you do this workout and you're insanely sore for four or five days afterwards, you can't walk, it hurts to move, you basically did too much work. You wanna do enough volume so that you could feel that the muscles got worked, but you don't want to be debilitatingly sore. So it's a process of trial and error, and over time, the goal should be to increase the amount of volume you do, but without increasing the workout duration too much. Of course, you're gonna have to increase workout duration as you get more advanced, but it shouldn't be that you're doing the same number of uh, sets with longer rest periods. You wanna keep the rest periods the same or even make them shorter. Now, a word on rest periods, it has to be very different here than in the gym. In the gym, the emphasis is always on progressive overload with weight, with strength. So you have to rest a long time to let your muscles recover. You have to rest maybe two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, especially on barbell squats or deadlifts, RDLs. Because we're just using body weight, we want to keep the intensity high. So you want to rest a very short amount of time. Ideally, you want to rest less than 90 seconds. Now, <laughs> it sounds very easy but when you're resting less than 90 seconds, there's gonna be a very big cardio component, especially with leg training. Now, you should look at this as a bonus because your leg days become a cardio day as well. Why do we wanna do cardio? Of course, it's good for your heart, it's good for your blood circulation, 
but you also get to burn a lot of fat. Um, it's good for your libido, especially because you're pumping a lot of blood into your legs. So there are a lot of benefits to these body weight leg days. It's not just your legs will look better, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna burn more fat. So definitely give this a try. I definitely recommend it. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys the exercises now and then we'll get into the workout. You'll see me performing the workout and you'll also see my girlfriend performing it as well. This could be done by both sexes, men and women. The first exercise is gonna be the step up. Again, like I said earlier, I'm gonna do the step up in a way that will emphasize calf development because I don't really like to train calf separately too much. I probably should and you should too, but I try to incorporate a little bit of calves into my step ups. The way you do these step ups in order to emphasize your calves, the entire set, you want to keep your heel in the air. If you put your heel flat, your calves will only work in the top range of motion. But if you keep your heels up in the air, the entire time, your calves will be under tension. And when you get to the top of the movement, you wanna do a calf raise. Looks like this. That's what these step ups look like. They work your quads quite hard and they work your calf muscles. So the entire time you have to try to keep your heel elevated slightly. And when you get to the top, you wanna lock out your calves like you would in a calf raise. You end up doing quite a lot of single leg calf raises, which are quite effective, even if you're doing them body weight. The next exercise that I will be doing is the walking lunge. If you're doing this outside, I recommend doing walking lunges because walking lunges are a really good way to work on your stability. Now, if you're inside, you should do reverse lunges. I'll show you guys the reverse lunges first. To do reverse lunges, you just step up, step back. You want to almost touch your knee to the ground, come up and come back. And then you switch your leg, lunge down, lunge up and come back. The reason that I'm doing reverse lunges is because they're a lot easier on your knees and a lot safer. They're also easier to perform from a stability perspective. So if you're a beginner, you should definitely be doing reverse lunges if you're inside. Now, if you like to train outside in the sun, like I do, then I encourage you to do walking lunges. With walking lunges, just like the name sounds, you lunge, step up, Lunge, step up, lunge. That's what walking lunges look like. The magic with walking lunges is it's very unstable and that's where your glutes really fire from the instability. Your side glutes, it's the muscle that helps you stabilize and not fall over. It's pretty important to train these, especially if you're an athlete who does sports. The next exercise that I will demonstrate is the bodyweight good morning. The bodyweight good morning will work your hamstrings, your calves, and your lower back. People like to say that the barbell good morning is a dangerous exercise because you have a load on your back and you're bending over. We're doing a bodyweight good morning. The risk is extremely low. You're just moving your body through space. Basically, anybody can bend over to pick up some groceries, pick up something off the floor. So in this movement, we're just training how to bend over. But we're bending over just using our back and our hamstrings. We don't wanna use our legs. So the way you wanna do it, you don't wanna have your legs completely locked out. You wanna have loose knees. And then it's very important what you do with your hands. If you keep your hands to your side, it's very easy to cheat and to increase the difficulty and the resistance, we want to keep our hands behind our head. The weight for this exercise is the weight of your arms and your hands. So you will hold your arms behind your head like this, 
you loosen up your knees and then you just bend forward. It's okay if your back rounds. It's not a problem. There is no load for this exercise. And you want to go until you feel a stretch in your hamstrings. You want to go until there's a maximum stretch. Every rep, you should feel a stretch in your hamstrings. So this constant stretching of the hamstring will make you very, very sore. You have to be careful not to do too much the first time you perform this exercise. Now, this exercise seems like it's very light, it's not gonna do anything, but trust me, if you do it, you will feel it. It's a very effective hamstring exercise. The last exercise is the good old body weight squat. We're not using any resistance here, just your body weight. But remember, you did step ups, you did walking lunges, you did good mornings. All of your muscles are pre fatigued by this point. We can also call it pre exhausted. So these body weight squats, while they seem extremely easy, extremely simple, at the stage that you're at now, they're not going to be so simple. The way you want to do your squats, you want to keep your hands anchored somewhere. It doesn't matter where in this exercise, but you don't want to keep them in front of you because it's very easy to cheat by moving your hands and using momentum. And we want to minimize momentum. So what you want to do is, I like to keep my hands like this for the squats. And it's the simplest movement. You squat down and then you squat up, squat down, squat up. And you want to go as low as you can. If you have mobility limitations, stop where you can't go anymore. And over time, your range of motion will increase. If you have good flexibility, you want to go just below parallel. Now, there's another factor you can consider when you're doing your body weight squats. You can change around the stance widths. If you have a wide stance squat, It'll target more the inside of your thighs over here. If you have a narrow stance squat, it'll target your quads directly in the front. What I do is I like to mix it up. I'll do three, four sets and then change the stance width. So maybe I'll do a few sets wide, a few sets narrow, a few sets in a medium stance. That way I get to work all the heads of my quadriceps. Now, because this is a squat, it's a compound movement, you'll also get some work in your lower back, you'll get a little bit of work in your hamstrings, and of course, your glutes. That's the end of today's workout. My legs are really, really pumped. You could see I got a good sweat going on, because it's pretty hot outside. And of course, body weight legs is a good cardio session, always. If you did your leg training correctly, you should be pretty sweaty, pretty tired. Because like I said earlier, you need to have short rest intervals to make it really effective. Uh, another word on volume, if you're a beginner, I would recommend doing two or three sets of 25 for each of the exercises. So two or three sets of 25 of step ups, of your lunges, of your good mornings, and then of your body weight squats. If you're an intermediate, you've been doing this for a little while, you could try five or six sets of each movement. I think 25 reps is a good number to shoot for. The way you keep it challenging is by reducing your rest interval. You can rest 30 seconds and then even doing sets of 25 on body weight squats will be pretty challenging. If you're advanced, you can go for the full 10 sets of each exercise it's going to be really tough. It might take you close to 30, 40 minutes. You'll be completely exhausted, but your legs will be destroyed. You're going to get an excellent workout. That would be 10 sets of step ups on each leg, 10 sets of lunges, and then 10 sets of good mornings, 10 sets of squats. I can't do that yet, but that's the goal ultimately. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed. Take it easy.